right now, right? Yeah, okay, sure. All right. Praful is also from home, right? You are, you are taking class from home today, right, Praful? Uh, yeah, last few days I haven't been able to, but today I got a chance. That's great. That's great. Right. So, <clears throat> so we were talking about by, uh, searching and uh, searching yesterday, right? So essentially, it is it is about linear search and binary search, right? That we talked about. Right. So uh, we know that linear search and binary search, right? So we know linear search takes on the order of n time. Binary search takes on the order of uh, log n okay. time, right? Linear search. Uh, um, you know, we can apply linear search on, let us say, uh, uh, on any data structure per se, right? Right? So, we can apply linear yeah. search on linked list also. We can apply linear search on binary trees also. So, linear search on binary trees means you are just traversing the binary tree in any, uh, any, or any traversal of your choice. And uh, while traversing, you are also checking the current element. Right. So, if I am doing a pre-order traversal of the binary tree and then while doing the pre-order traversal, I am also checking if current node is equal to the value that I am searching, uh, then return true, otherwise keep on searching the left subtree and right subtree. Right. So, so okay. how, how, how do we search in a normal binary tree? In a normal binary tree, how do we search is that we compare the root. So, if root is equal to x, then return true, otherwise check the left subtree and the right subtree. If left subtree return true or right subtree return true, then you also return true. Otherwise, you will return false. Okay. So, if element is found in left sub yeah. left subtree or in the right subtree, then you return true. Otherwise, you will return false. Right. So, this this is in a way uh, linear traversal, right? Because we are traversing all the nodes, right? And we are doing it in pre-order traversal, right? So, so this is linear yeah. search. Right. Similarly, you know, if if there is any data structure that we can traverse linearly, then uh, uh, searching in that data structure is linear, right? So linear search is basically traversal, right? So linear basically means uh, sequential, right? In ha huh, in any order, in any order, right? So uh, this binary tree is actually not sequential per se. Binary tree itself is not sequential. But when we search in this binary tree, we follow some sequence, right? We follow the pre-order sequence or in-order sequence when we traverse this binary tree, right? So in that sense, uh, the traversal is always sequential. You, 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 is it right? Yeah. Right? So basically, you know, how, how do we traverse it in pre-order traversal? 5, 3, 1, 4, 10, 15. So this is, this is the sequence in which we are traversing. So in a way, it is a, it is a kind of linear traversing because we are moving, we are kind of checking each and every element, right? It is not that we are so discarding what, any element. So what will be non-linear then? Binary search is BST. So binary search is applicable only when your data is arranged in a certain way. For arrays, if your data is sorted, only then you can apply binary search. For a, for a, for a tree, only if your tree is BST, then you can apply binary search. So if my tree is BST, then applying binary search means at this point, you will not search in right subtree at all. If you are looking for value that is less than 5. Or if you are looking for value greater than 5, then you will not search in the left subtree at all. Right? So, uh, so non-linear non -linear basically means skipping a part. Yeah, skipping a part. And not, not going in an ordered manner. Ordered manner. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, <clears throat> this, is not a, this is not a definition that exists. Right? So, we are just thinking of searching in every data structure. So, if we say that... Uh, uh, in in a tree, we are searching like this. Then uh, it is it is a kind of linear order tra linear searching because it is also taking on the order of n time, and we are visiting each and every node. Basically, what is linear search? Linear search means you visit each and every node, and at each node you check whether the value of that node is equal to the value that you are looking for. Okay. Right? In binary search, you kind of discard some elements, and you do not you do not actually search all the uh, all the elements. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> All right. So let us say, let us say, you know, I have this, uh, I have this array. So if, if I have a sorted array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, I'm given the sorted array, then 
we kind of rotate this sorted array. Let us say we rotate it by three positions. So rotating it by three positions means the, my array becomes four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three. Right? So we moved the first three elements at the end. Right? So this is the array that is given to me. I want to search in this array. How will you search in this array? Anura? Starting with the lowest element first. Starting with the lowest element. So basically, you know, uh, yes. the brute force way is always available to us. Brute force way is perform linear search. So linear search will take on the order of n time. Right. So we want to optimize this. Right. Right. So uh, break it into two parts, which are which are themselves in exactly. uh, ascending order. Exactly. So basically, you will say that, you know, this is my first array. And this is my second array. Right. So this is uh, low one, high one. So low and high of the first array. This is low two, high two low and high of the secondary right how will you find this element how will you find this element because this is not given to us uh, so we'll this time we'll have to do some uh, go in a linear fashion we'll start with the first and if the next one is great uh, the first element we find that is less than the previous one we'll stop there so in the worst so we we'll start with four in the worst case what can happen is that the array is rotated by one one only if the array is rotated by one only, then this mm. one will be at the end, right? So finding eight itself is an on the order of n time operation. Yeah. So you have you have kind of traversed the entire array just to find that element so that we can apply binary search on it, right? So so rather than doing so much of work, probably you can just do linear search. You got the point, right? Yeah. So linear search requires only one traversal. And here we are we are doing one traversal to find the element and then we are applying binary search also. Okay. okay. So let's let's call it pivot. So basically we want to find this pivot, right? So pivot is a point of rotation. So either you call this pivot or this pivot. That, that's your choice. Any, anybody else? Uh, compare it with the mid, uh, depending upon like, mm -hmm. uh, if you compare the upper and the, mm -hmm. the low mm -hmm. and the high, mm -hmm. so here the low and the high uh, is, the A of low is actually greater Uh, the list was in increasing order so yeah yeah so basically you know uh, uh, so you are saying you are suggesting that we should be using something like uh, something like binary search right so we are using the same logic of binary search to first find this pivot right hello yeah problem so we are not able to hear you for a no like uh, just a second now now is it clear no i think it was connectivity problem coming yeah. rather than audio problem all right so uh, what i was saying was that what you are suggesting is right so what you are suggesting that uh, we should be using the logic of binary search to find this pivot also right right so basically when we use the logic of binary search we have one low let us say this is my low one high this is my high and then we move to mid this is my mid and then we compare mid with mid with data because we want to find data so here we have to apply some logic so that we can come up to a conclusion that mid is the element that we are looking for so so what is special about this element what is special about this eight or what is special about this one uh the uh, left is less than right is uh, they are adjacent and they are 
yeah so 8 is the only element in this array for which both left and right are less than uh, both uh, which is greater than both of its neighbors left yeah right otherwise all the elements they are greater than one of the neighbors and less than one of the uh, less than the other neighbor right yeah right so basically <clears throat> how we will uh, how how probably we can do is that uh, initially uh, low is equal to 0 high is equal to n minus 1 and we will continue it like this while low is uh, so so let's let's come up to the condition later and what we will be doing is we will be computing mid mid is equal to low plus high divided by 2 and then we will be checking if uh, mid is the element so basically if a mid is greater than a of mid plus 1 and a mid is also greater than a of mid minus 1 right in this case so in this case we should be very cautious with, with our conditions because you know that is what the interviewer will be looking into he will be looking into all these conditions only so the before applying this condition we should also check that m uh, uh, mid is less than n n minus 1 right because we are we are using m plus 1 right here here also we should we should apply a check that mid is greater than 0 right otherwise we are otherwise we will be venturing outside the bounds of this array Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, I'm just telling you that what what is it that the interviewer will be looking into? These are the things that the interviewer will be looking into. Otherwise, this is a straightforward logic. So, once we find the uh, once we find the position of pivot, then we will do binary search in first part of the array and second part of the array. Right. So that will be easier. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, by the way, how, how will you how will you rotate this array? Let us say I am given this array and I want to rotate this array by k positions. So if k is equal to 3, then the output should be this. Right? So I am given this array 1, 2, 3, 4 and and a value and a value k. Let us say k is equal to 3. So if k is equal to 3, then first three values should be, uh, uh, you know, uh, first three values should come at the end. So how, how will you rotate this array? Re reverse the individual parts and then join them. Reverse the individual parts means first three elements. 3, 2, 1. Reverse the first three elements then reverse the last uh, n minus k elements eight, seven. which is 8 7 6 5 and 4 and then and then reverse this entire array right yeah. so now if i reverse this entire array we will get 4 then 5 6 7 8 1 2 and 3 Right? So it this is, is not not from uh, from my own. I have already seen this question. Yeah, that is fine. That is fine. Right. So, <clears throat> right. so um, first you reverse the first k elements, then you reverse the last n minus k elements, and then you reverse the entire array. What will be the order complexity of this? Uh, uh, three into n. Basically, on the order of n. Right. On the order of n, yeah. right? Three into on the order of n is on the order of n, right? Yeah. So how how do you reverse the array? If I have this function, uh, let us say void reverse integer pointer a integer n. Yeah, go ahead. So we'll start from uh, take uh, take two counters. Okay. First uh, zero and then uh, other so uh, n minus one. To zero high is equal to n minus one. Two. Incre uh, keep incrementing the lower one uh, and uh, decrementing the higher one while l they all should right. be less than l should be less than h all right and and we will and we should be swapping the values at lower we'll we'll, yes right so swap uh, a of low address of we, we have to pass address of a, address of a dot low 
comma address of a high in C language in C plus plus we can pass ref by reference also right so swap these two values and do low plus plus and high minus minus and continue doing it while low is less than high right so this is a on the order of n time operation right yeah but uh, uh, hmm. uh, which way is better kamal i want to ask uh, the standard way of reversing or this one both of them are standard way of reversing what, what is the standard way of reversing standard way of reversing is that Means you take loop for i is equal to 0 i is less than n by 2 i plus plus no start from start from uh, i equal to n minus 1 and i is greater than 0 means reverse All and right. keep, take another string and keep a, keep a pending characters to that string no, no, that, that is expensive because you are using extra memory, right? So it has to be in-place algorithm. Right? It has to be an in-place algorithm. No? We, we, are, we are reversing the same array. So what you are saying is that if we take another array, right? If we take yeah. another array and then we kind of copy paste these values there, three. So uh, this, this yeah. array is A, this array is B. So A of N minus one will go in B of zero and so on. So th this is obviously yeah. a, th this is a bad way. This is a bad way of doing it, right? We have so to. So what are you suggesting? So so what I was saying was that this is exactly same as uh, saying that for i is equal to zero, i is less than n by two, i plus plus. So swap uh, okay. a of i, comma a of n minus i minus one. This is the same as previous one. This is the same as previous one, right? Here, just that we are using two variables. Here, we are using one variable, but that that hardly matters, right? Unless unless the interviewer is uh, is a guy who who just wants you to write this code only, he will say that you know without using two variables. But usually, interviewers are not that uh, uh, not not that naive. I mean, uh, usually usually they are not that that kind of people, right? All right. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, so, uh, yeah. So you know, uh, I have. So I checked assignments, and with one with one question, almost all of you have given the same problem. So I wanted to discuss one question of the assignment. So that question was that uh, a polynomial is given, a zero x raised to power n plus a1 x raised to power n minus 1 plus a2 x raised to power n minus 2 and so on plus a n so we want to compute the value of this polynomial so how how the input is given is that all these all these values all these a's are given in the array so let us say this array is a so first value will be a0 second value is a1 third value is a2 and so on and last value is an and we are given a value of x right let us say x is 2 or 3 right so we are given this value of x and we want to compute this polynomial we want to compute the value of this polynomial right yeah so most of you have used power function of 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 library right so we have seen a raised to the power n if i want to uh, write a function to compute a raised to power n then what will be the time complexity the brute force method will take on the order of n time right yeah but we can write a function that will take on the order of log n time yeah but this this is the most optimal optimal way of doing it so power function must be taking on the order of log n time no but when we are using a library function it will already we can assume it will be optimized only it is optimized now but it cannot be a constant time function right if, if it is 2 raised to the power n then it can be a constant time function but if it is general a raised to the power n, then uh, you know library writers are people like us only, right? So a normal function that compute a raised to the power b, I mean it, it will probably be a log log b time function. It cannot be a constant time function, right? Yeah. Okay. So so that will end up taking on the order of n log n time if you are using power function right so we are we are in a way taking on the order of n log n time 
a different way of doing it is uh, the way it is used in uh, one of the string matching algorithms i think uh, robin karp algorithm so how how that algorithm does is that initially sum is equal to sum is equal to a0 then we say sum is equal to sum into x plus a of i into x plus a of i right and this loop goes from for i is equal to 1 i is less than n i plus plus i think uh, this is discussed in the solution i am not sure i have not watched the solution but this must have been discussed in the solution right yeah. so so what will be what will be the sum what will be the sum so sum will be equal to initially we are saying a0 uh, so so let's let us say uh, the polynomial is 2x raised to the power 4 plus 3x cube plus uh, 6x square plus 7x plus 9 right so we are doing we are doing 2 then we are doing into x plus 3 then we are doing into x plus 6 then we are doing all of this into x plus 7 then we are doing all of this into x plus 9 right so 9 will be like this only if we if we open this bracket then it will be 9 plus 7x plus 6x square because uh, you know 1x is this 1x is this uh, similarly 3x cube 2x raised to power 4 so this 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 method will take on the order of n time right and right yeah so, uh, Praful, can can you be active now? Active uh, now? Kamal, can you explain how it will how it will take an order when? So we are just running one loop, right? Yeah. It, it is just one loop, and in this loop, we are doing constant amount of work. Right? So we are not using any library function. We are just doing one multiplication and one addition. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, got it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ruffin? Yeah. All right. So, you know, uh, I'm. Uh, we are given a sorted array. Let us say we are given this sorted array. Integer A is equal to 1, 2. And there are repeated elements in this sorted array. 5 6 i want to find how many times 3 is repeating in this array so how, how can i find how many times is 3 repeating in this array so using binary search you find the occurrence of the mm -hmm. element which will take log n time all right and with... then from 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 that position uh, go left and right all until right you find an element until it is the same element so if you land up mm. so that, that will end, position that will end up taking on the order of n time if let us say the element is repeating say n by two times right so if there are n elements in this array and one element is repeating n by two times or maybe you know n minus one times or n minus two times then we will find some occurrence of this array and then we will be moving forward n by two times or maybe n minus one times right so moving forward n minus one times will actually end up taking on the order of n time right 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 or in the right. worst case you know what if all the elements of the array are same then we will end up traversing the array that can be handled uh, right. separately i mean you you can just check with the first element and the last element but uh, still uh, if there are n minus two element n minus two repetitions or maybe n by two repetitions then the asymptotic complexity will be linear. Um, so even after finding the element. Mm. Uh, so when you say find, which occurrence you are talking about? You are talking about normal find or you are talking about 
uh, some specific occurrence? Um, no, this is a normal occurrence. I'm not putting any condition. So it could be the first three, or last three, or the middle three. So wh why don't put a yeah. condition? Why not put a condition? Let us say that you know I apply binary search and found the first occurrence of three. I can find the first occurrence of three that uh, the value before it should be less than three or it should be the zeroth index right okay right, right. so i take i take low and high and i'm looking for three i'm not looking for any three i'm looking for a three for which uh, uh, the value before it is less than three or it does not have a value before it or it okay. is the first element in the array right so, mm -hmm. so, so this can be found in log n time Mm -hmm. Right. Similarly, I can find the last occurrence in log n time. Log n time. Right. Uh, the condition for that will be yeah. that uh, the value after it is greater than three, or that, but or it is the last element. Either it is the last element or the element after it is greater than three. Right. So first occurrence, let us say f, can be found in log n time. Last occurrence, let us say l, can also be found in log n time. Then total number of repetitions will be l minus f plus 1 okay right overall log n overall log n complexity uh, come on, could you just repeat that once again how did you find the first occurrence sure sure so basically what we are doing is that uh, the way we are searching here you know we are, we are so let us say this is my low this is my high right so success is when, so I will be computing mid is equal to low plus high divided by 2. Okay. Right. So success will be when A of mid is equal to X that we are searching for. And A of mid minus 1 is less than X. Uh, so so this, 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 will be, this will be a different condition. So first of all, that value is equal to x, and secondly, and uh, mid is greater than zero, or uh, mid, mid is greater than zero, and a of mid minus one is less than x. Right. Uh, is it sufficient or should we put some other condition so it will it will so if uh, mid is equal to zero then it will not uh, give us true value right so we will say that or mid is equal to zero mid is equal to zero okay so we can just say mid is equal to zero or a of mid is less than x so this value can be removed so mid is equal to zero or this value okay so if mid is either mid is zero which means that it it, it is the first element or uh, the element before it is less than x right ankur okay right? yeah otherwise we will just keep moving right uh, if the value is less than x then low is equal to mid plus one otherwise high is equal to mid minus one so even if even if we are at this three, we will do high is equal to high minus one, and we will again compute mid because we have not found our first occurrence, right? So we are not looking for three per se; we are looking for a specific occurrence of three, okay. right? Okay. Uh, so you know, uh, we uh, uh, you I think all of you have our dynamic programming book. But we have written this searching and sorting book in which I have dedicated one chapter for each binary search and li linear search. So there, there are uh, for, for that chapter we have to actually search for these kind of questions. Right. So I'm just looking whether uh, uh, is, is there something that I have not covered. Yeah, this this is important. Right. So, uh, so you know, uh, I mean, this is not important from interview point of view. I don't think any interviewer will ask it. But uh, uh, can you think of a situation where uh, linear search is is better than binary search? So this is just to complete the topic. 
the the number of elements is very less uh even, even if the number of elements are less uh, i mean still uh, uh, linear search will <coughs> will still be taking on the order of n time binary, uh, binary search will still be taking on the order of log n time uh, it is not like insertion sort where you know uh, the difference is huge because insertion sort uh, uh, the comp uh, the constant factor of insertion sort is very very low in comparison to other comparison sorting algorithms so we'll discuss that right but uh, still uh, the other person can argue that binary search is better so one one obvious obvious thing is that uh, if we do not have a sorted array right that that is an obvious thing so we are not talking about that situation Right. So we have an option of either having a sorted array or having an unsorted array or we can arrange the elements in some other way but uh, we, we want to perform linear search, we do not want to perform binary search and we want the complexity of linear search to be better than binary search. I mean is, is, there, a, is there a situation possible? Obviously general situation, in general situation it, it is not possible. Right? But what if, what if you know I have this array let us say I have this array A0, A1, A2, A3 and so on up to An. And let us say that 90% uh, of the times, you know, let us say 50% of the times I am searching for A0. Right, so I am searching for A0 50% of the times. So half of the times I will be looking for the first element. In this array 25% of the times I will be searching for A1. Right, then 12.5% of the times I will be searching for this. So, uh, so I am searching for element in decreasing order of frequency. Uh, 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 the frequency of element searched, element being searched, is in decreasing order, decreasing GP. Uh, okay. ha have I confused you or? No. Uh. Okay. So, so basically, you know, for fifty percent of the cases, linear search will give uh, linear search will take on the order of one time, right? Binary search will take on the order of log n time, right? Yeah. Uh, for other twenty-five percent of the cases, also linear search will take on the order of one time because uh, you know we are just searching the second element. Binary search will still take on the order of log n time, right? So for this last element, the frequency will be very, very less. The frequency of searching of this last element is very, very less. For this element, we are getting an advantage in binary search. So if, if we look at the overall uh, overall uh, situation, maybe we would like to arrange this array in the decreasing order of frequency of search of elements rather than in sorted order. Uh, right? So you know this is just because interviews are discussions na? so you, you never know what the interviewer asks you or maybe you know just, just for fun he is asking something right. So if, if you are able to come up with situations then uh, uh, those actually give very good impression. But if we, if we uh, mm -hmm. arrange it in, a, in another order other than uh, sorted order then binary search won't be applicable right. We'll always every time we do binary search we'll have to sort it. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's what actually the question is. So basically, so that will be additional overhead. No, 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 no. The, you you didn't understand the question, I think. So the question is that, uh, uh, all right. So you uh, you know, uh, you this is an array that you know I'll be searching for five most of the times. Then I'll be searching for three. Then most of the times. Uh, then I'll be searching for ten. Then I'll be searching for one. Then I'll be searching for two. Right. So let us say if I make 100 searches then 50% of the times I will be searching for this right 25% I will be 25 times I am searching for this let us say 12 times I am searching for this and and so on right so this is decreasing GP right. So uh, you are given this array and we want to optimize search and we have an option of pre-arranging the data. Hum data ko jaise chahe waise arrange kar sakte that is the option that is available to us. So what is the order that you want your data to be in? Option number one, you will arrange your data like this and apply linear search. Option number two, you will arrange your data like this, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10 and you will apply binary search. So which option will you go with? First one I think. First one na? 
so that's what we that's what the question was so question was that is there a situation in which you will prefer linear search over binary search right given that you can prearrange the data in your choice according to your choice uh, is it clear now An anra yeah, yeah. All right. All right. So, so you know, this was this was one thing. Yeah. Come on, sorry to interrupt again. Uh, no can we buy the soft copy of that book online? The soft copy is available sorry, online. You can buy soft copy, hard copy. It is available on Amazon, Flipkart, wherever. Soft copy. Yes, yeah, soft copy okay. is also available. So I am not sure about the soft copy. If you buy the soft copy, just let me know the feedback, because you know okay. I have I have received a bad feedback on Kindle edition. So I am not sure if it is because of the format. If it is because of the format, I'll talk to the publisher. Otherwise, if it is not because of the format or kisi ko content pasand hai, then it is fine. No PDF will be available so that we can read it on desktop. No PDFs are not available. Soft copy are Kindle editions. You know. Uh, oh, Only oh, Kindle. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Soft soft copies are not PDFs are not soft. Uh, PDF is not available. Okay. Uh, already, our book ki pirated copy has come in market. Mein. So, PDFs are more than that. It's actually good. I mean, it shows that uh, people are interested in the book. All right. Uh, uh, this is fine, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Kamal? Yeah. There could be another situation where you would uh, prefer linear shift because it would be more problematic based on if you cannot move any elements. Such as a uh, question such as Finding a long, longest common palindromic string in a string. Longest palindromic string. string. So, uh, is is it a searching problem or is it a different problem? I think it's a searching problem because you're trying to ask what you need to find the longest string right, right. Your palindrome but, yeah, within, yeah. within the whole string. Yeah. Uh, like so, so if you're if you're trying to find the longest palindromic, you you're trying to find the longest palindromic subsequence. So if you are trying to find the lo longest palindromic subsequence, then you do not have an option of sorting or prearranging it because you cannot right. change the order. If you change the order, then the palindromic behavior will change, right? So if I have this yeah. five one two, then this is yeah. a palindrome, right? Uh, five one five is a palindrome, but right. if I if I kind of prearrange it, uh, sort it, then it 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 right. ceases to be become a, it ceases to remain a palindrome, right? It stops right. being a palindrome. So in those situations where we cannot change the arrangement of the data there we do not have an option there we have to you know go with the data okay right so so let's look at one more situation right so let us say that you know i am printing the salary slips right so i am printing the salary slips uh, then chances are that uh, once i have searched for a person right uh, let us say there are uh, a b c d e right so these these are the people whose salary slips i want to print so i first i looked for c then i printed the salary slip of c then i inserted c at the end of the list right i moved c and i inserted at the end of the list so this is possible uh, uh, this is uh, this is better if we have this in the form of array in the form of linked list right so if we have it in the form of linked list, then I cannot apply binary search, right? Yeah. Uh, Prafal, you are there, na? Yeah. All right. So you know, uh, I have this situation where I I am given a linked list, and uh, I want to optimize my search, and the situation is that uh, if I have searched for a value, then the chances of uh, searching the same value is minimal right right so the situation is that for example if if we want to print the salary slips of uh, employees then uh, first we looked for c then we printed the salary slip of c so unless the salary slip is printed wrong we will not be printing the salary slip of c again then we will be looking for b we will be printing the salary slip of b then we will be searching for d so we will be printing the salary slip of d then we will be searching for let us say e so we will be printing the salary slip of e and then we we are say searching for a and printing the salary slip of a right so this so this is my this is my uh, this is my use case so how can i optimize my linear search because i cannot apply binary search 
how can i optimize my search so one way of doing it is that every time i found an element i print the salary slip of the person and i move the person at the end of the list right so if it is a linked list then deleting the node and inserting the node at the end will take constant time if we have it pointed to the last also right so if we maintain a pointer to the last then deleting the node and inserting it at the end will take constant time right once we once we found that node right so then the list will become a b d and e so now when and c now when i when i am searching for d so then i will print the salary slip of d then my list will become a b e c and d now when i am searching for b so uh, so searching for b means this my list will become like this and i have printed the salary slip of b then searching for e will be e will require just two iterations just two iterations so second node is e otherwise e was the fifth node right yeah so similarly you know there can be multiple such situations so this is actually move last heuristics we are moving the la moving the node that we have searched for at the end similarly there can be move first right move first means that uh, the chances of searching the element again is high so this is used in operating systems that uh, you know uh, 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 maybe the page that you are looking for so you will be searching for the same page again right so how how we do is that uh, we kind of move that page to the front of the list so if it is a operating system scheduler list right profit yeah all right okay so you know these move first move last heuristics can be applied on linear search all right then in binary search there were few interesting questions this is similar to like uh, caching policies right exactly 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 so then uh, yeah so you know there is one discussion that in binary tree uh, in binary search we actually uh, so in binary search tree in bst we kind of have this kind of arrangement 5 3 10 1 4 8 10, let us say and 20 right so each node has one data and two pointers right so each node has one data let us say five is the data and two pointers so all the values less than found, less than five will be found in this particular subtree and all the values greater than five will be found in this particular subtree right so this is a two way subtree binary tree is a two way subtree why two way because at each node we have two possible ways to move move down the hierarchy right so similarly uh, when we have two way tree so we can have three way tree three way tree means that each node will have three data each node will have two data let us say uh, the data is 5 uh, and 15 so all the values which are less than 5 are here all the values which are between 5 and 15 are here and all the values which are greater than 15 are here right so let us say that you know 1 uh, 4 and we have a zero here and two three here right so two three will be this right so these will be null pointers these are null pointers right and after four is a null pointer right? similarly uh, we can have multiple values here we can have multiple values here right so if this particular tree is implemented in a nicer way then uh, the the height of the tree will further reduce right height of a binary tree is log n 
to the base 2 like height of a binary tree is log n to the base 2 if it is balanced height of this particular tree if we are able to maintain the balance will be log n to the base 3 right because it is a 3 way tree so if it is a general m way tree then the height of the tree will be log m if it is a balanced tree right but this m way tree is actually very difficult to implement uh, uh, in the sense that uh, the, what, what will be the structure of the node? The structure of the node will be simple. So structure node. So each node will have m minus one data elements and m pointers, right? So integer data m. So data is an array of m elements and node pointer node pointer let us say uh, child m minus 1 this will be m minus 1 and this will be m right so we will be comparing in this array so let us say my data array stores uh, 5, 1, 6 and 10. Right. So if I am searching for 7, then 7 will be somewhere in between. Right. So here uh, uh, the link to the first subtree will be child 0. This will be child 1, this will be child 2, this will be child 3, this will be child 4. So if I am searching for let us say 4 then it can only be filed find in child 1 subtree it cannot be found in uh, other 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 subtrees mm. does, does it make sense profile yes so let me do one thing that i will i will uh, i will write a concept on this right so i will i will write a pdf on this so maybe i will extract the uh, part from this uh, 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 file and i will write a pdf on this right all right that would the explanation that you gave it's more like a two three tree right i mean this is just with the two with the three nodes three data nodes and then you're trying to fix yeah, so this is a three-way tree. This is a three-way tree. Yeah. Right. Similarly, we can have five-way tree or six-way tree. Okay. Right. So we have actually this. This uh, you know this is used in indexing in databases. Earlier indexing indexing uh, uh, to index a database, we used to use uh, B plus trees. B plus tree. Yes. Right? So B plus three is nothing but a balanced implementation of this M way tree. Right? B plus three is a balanced implementation of this M way tree. Right. So in order to search in this B uh, tree, so you do a binary search on the data array and then find the element. Yeah. Which is yeah. Just created because by because data array is sorted. Data array is sorted. So we will do a binary search on this. We will do a binary search to find out whether the data is present in this. If the data is present in, it, in this, well and good. We have found the data at the root. So for example, we have found six. Right? If we are not able to found six, then we will found uh, the, uh, the element, uh, basically the index, let us say mid, which is less than, less than the value that we are searching for. Right? Let us say we are searching for eight. So we will found this index. So this index is what 0 1 2 so this index is 2 so we have found 2 so we can conclude that 8 can be present in child of uh, 0 1 2 3 child of 3 right so th this can be concluded right? or uh, since it is uh, since it is such a small array normally you know we do not have m way tree of the order of uh, 100 way trees we usually have 5 way tree or 3 way tree or 4 way tree so we can perform a linear search also 
because uh, in such a short array if my array has only five elements then linear search will also take in a way constant time right it is just five elements right yeah all right so you must have seen this question uh, check whether a pair exists with the same value in an, in an array or not right so i am given an array 1 5 6 uh, 2 10 let's say this is the array and uh, my value is x is equal to 11 or maybe x is equal to 8 so i am looking for a pair who adds up to 8 whose sum is equal to 8 so such a pair exists because 6 plus 2 is equal to 8 right if value of x is equal to 9 then such a pair does not exist we cannot have two elements we cannot add two elements to add up to 9 right yeah all right so ankur ankur you want to talk about it if you already know this so this is a very popular uh, uh, popular problem yeah, my my solution that i have found is uh, hmm. more or less an n logging n logging solution n logging solution yeah so what i would do i would sort right. uh, the uh, the whole array in uh, ascending order so it would mm -hmm. be 1 2 5 6 and then take one pointer from the from the from the starting and one pointer from the end all right and just keep on adding them till I find my two pairs that are added to the sum. So let us say I am looking uh, for eight. So one plus ten is yeah. one plus ten is greater than eight. What should I do now? You should move uh, the, both the counters minus uh, like counter one plus plus and the other counter two minus minus. All right. And then you'll reach the six and two. So and let us say let eight, us say which so let us let us say this is four. So this will be four. Mm -hmm. And let us say I am looking for 7. Okay. Right. So I am looking for 7. So my low is here. My high is here. 10 plus 1 okay. is 11. So it is not equal to 7. So yeah. we do this and this. No, uh, I am moving both the counters. Both so, of them together. Yeah, both of them are moved. So low is incremented and high is decremented. Yeah, so low is 2 and high is 6 now high is six. Oh, all right sorry high is six right so two plus six is also not equal to seven then both of them will be here right, right. so now once i've crossed it then there's i cannot find any element mm -hmm. per se that is mm -hmm. uh bearing up to that mm -hmm. but six plus one is seven right yeah. so that element yeah. exists that pair exists right Well, the other thing, the other one will be that move your counter, the the the, the big the big the end counter downwards. So you find another element that is added. All right. So basically, you know, wh why are you taking two counters? I mean, what is it that we want? So so let's look at let's two. let let us look at the brute force solution. Basically, you know, e even if we right. don't do not sort it, what is the brute force solution? Right. So, because we are searching for 7, uh, if I am at right. 1, I will be looking for 6, right? If I am at 4, yes. I will be looking for 3. If I am at 6, I will be looking for 1. If I am at 2, I will be looking for 5. If I am at 10, then it is not possible because right. it is already greater than this, right? So, basically, right. I for, for i is equal to 0, i is less than n minus 1 because we want a pair i plus plus, right? <laughs> So what we will be searching for is that basically we are searching for search for x minus a i in uh, array array a starting from starting from i plus one up to n minus one right? right basically this is this is what we want right right so this searching this searching you know uh, because the array is not sorted this searching has to be linear search right, right. So, so searching will take on the order of n time and because there are on the order of n elements so the total time taken will be on the order of n square, n square. Right. 
so now what we want is that we kind of first sorted this array so sorting will take on the order of n log n time 